A friend of Aaron McKinney. Officer Reggie Flutie. When I got there at first, 
At first, the only thing I could see was partially somebody's feet, and I got in my vehicle and raced over. I seen what appeared to be a young man, uh, 13, 14 years old, because he was so tiny, laying on the ground, and he was tied to the bottom end of the pole. I did the best I could. The gentleman was laying on the ground, Matthew Shepard, and he was covered in dry blood, and there was dry blood underneath him, and he was barely breathing. He was just doing the best he could. I was going to breathe for him, but his mouth wouldn't open. It wouldn't open for me. He was covered in, like I said, partially dry blood, blood all over his head. The only place he did not appear to have any blood on him, on his face, was where he appeared to be crying down his face. His head was distorted. You know, it did not look normal. He looked as if he had, had a real harsh head wound. I was working in the emergency room the night that Matthew Shepard was brought in, and I don't think that any of us remember seeing a patient in that condition for a long time. Those of us who have worked in big city hospitals have seen this, but uh, not all of us have worked in big city hospitals, and it's not something you expect here. You expect to see these kinds of injuries from a car going down a hill at 80 miles an hour. You expect to see these kinds of gross, injuries from something like that. This horrendous, terrible thing. You don't expect to see these kinds of injuries from a person doing this to another person. The ambulance reports that it was a beating, so we knew. There was nothing I could do. I mean, if there was anything I could have done to help him, I would have done it, but I was yelling at the top of my lungs like, hey, wake up, hello. But he didn't move, he didn't flinch, he didn't anything. He was tied to the fence. His hands were thumbs out for what we call the cuffing position, the way we handcuff people. He was bound with a real thin white rope, and went around the bottom of the pole, about four inches up off the ground. His shoes were missing. He was tied extremely tight, so I got out my boot bag and tried to slip it between the rope and his wrist. I had to be extremely careful to not harm Matthew any further. Your first thought is, well, certainly like to think that it is, is it's somebody that comes through town and beats someone. I mean, things like this happen. Shit happens, and it happens in Laramie. Oh, but I haven't seen a patient in that condition for a long time. And once I saw him, it was obvious that his care was out of our capabilities. He was tied so tight, I finally got my knife through there. I'm sorry. We rolled him over onto his side, and as soon as we did that, he quit breathing. So we rolled him back over on his back, and that was just enough of an adjustment for me to be able to cut him free there. I seen the EMS unit trying to get to the location. Once the ambulance got there, we put a neck collar on him, put him on a backboard, and scooted him out from under the fence. Then Rob drove him, in, drove him to the Ivinson Hospital's emergency room. The strange thing is, 20 minutes before Matthew came in, Aaron McKinney was brought in by his girlfriend. Now, I guess he got into a fight later on that night back in town. And so here I am working on Aaron, and the ambulance comes in with Matthew. At this point, I don't know there's a connection at all. So I tell Aaron to wait, and I go treat Matthew. And once, I don't know. They finally showed me a picture of Matthew. Days later, I saw a picture of him. I would never have recognized him. And days later, I found out the connection. And I was very struck. They were two kids. They were both my patients, and they were two kids. And for a brief moment, I wondered if this is how God feels when he looks down at us. How are all his kids? Our bodies? Our souls? And I felt a great deal of compassion for both of them.